COD Champs is just one week away, and by now, the storylines, the discussions, and the previews and predictions are all heating up. But I want to take a different approach to a COD Champs preview, and I want to talk about five players who I think are under the most pressure to have a really good performance at COD Champs this year. If you enjoy this kind of video, definitely let me know by leaving a like down below. Leave a comment as well with your thoughts on the video and your thoughts on who you think is under the most pressure at COD Champs. And also, subscribe to the channel as well if you want to see more CDL breakdown videos from me in the future. I do appreciate all of that so very much, and let's hop right into the video. The player who I think is under the most pressure by far at champs has to be Formal, and there are multiple reasons for this. I think we can all agree by now that Formal has been Optic's weak link pretty much for the entire season, and then, you know, definitely at times. Now, he's not been terrible, but he just has not performed the way we are used to seeing from him, and I think it's safe to say he's been holding his team back a little bit. Now, they have had very good placements this year. They still have been top four every stage but one. They even got that top three at stage five. So they surely are a good team, and he has not been horrible, but he has not been himself, and he will have to be better if this team wants to perform and have any chance at bringing home the championship at champs. Also, there have been no Grand Finals appearances for Optic this year, which, as far as I know, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure both Skump and Formal have never had an entire title where they have not been in a Grand Finals of a tournament. So that would be a, you know, a big disappointment for these guys, two of the five best players to ever do it in Call of Duty history, and they would be, you know, they would not like to go out of this event without even making a Grand Finals. So I think Formal definitely has to pick it up if they want to do that. But the good news for him and them is he is an all-time great COD Chance performer. He will not let them down. I have very good confidence in him that he will come to play and he will turn in one of his best performances of the year. It's champs, it's on land, it's formal. I mean, that's a good combination. That's a good probability of him turning in a good performance, but he has to. If he does not play well, they just their peak is probably top four or top three. If he's playing well, they can win this tournament. But if he's not and he plays terribly... They won't place well, and he might be on his way out of the green wall. So I think there's a lot of pressure on Formal to have a very good performance this weekend or next weekend at Champs. The next player who has to put together a strong performance at Champs is John of the LA Thieves. Again, multiple reasons for this. First off, he has just underperformed since he's been in their starting lineup. I think he's only been in there for Stage 5, and he really has not been much of an improvement over TJ or Venom or the other guys they have had at that SMG role throughout the course of the season. We know they've made many roster changes. He really hasn't been that much better, or at least they have not been that much better with him in there. Um, compared to his teammates, Slasher, he's been playing great lately. Draza has been playing very well lately. Kenny, not so much, but I am pretty confident in Kenny showing up and having a good performance at Champs. And I mean, you got to figure Slasher's going to play well. It'd be very surprising to see him come in and just drop a goose egg in Champs. That's not really in Slasher's vocabulary. So I think the pressure's on John because I think we know what we're going to get from his teammates, and he's kind of the wild card. There's also zero margin for error for this LA Thieves team. They are starting in the loser's bracket. We know that by now. So if they lose one match, they are done. I mean, you could see a situation where Slasher, Draza, and Kenny, they, sh they all show up ready to play. They play very well, but John drops the ball, and they're eliminated, and it's just all on him. You don't want that to happen. He has He's had his ups and downs this year. He's looked very sharp at times. He's been pretty bad at search, and there's just times where he's not getting enough kills on the map to really help his team win any matches. So he will have to do that because they do not have any chance. If they lose once, they are done. And also with John, this could be his last chance. I mean, he's definitely towards the end of his career. He's not towards the beginning. He was a very good player for a long time. He's one of the best SMG players of all time but like I said he's getting older I think even if Kenny or Draza come in and they have a bad performance there's no doubt they will be on a CDL roster next season there are no worries for those guys for John that's not the case if he comes out and plays bad and costs his team any kind of a run through the losers bracket that can definitely be bad for his stock as we approach next season so there's pressure on him not only for his team and just not letting them down because they're in the losers bracket and also for his own professional career as we move forward to next year so John has to play well this week or next weekend if they want a chance to win and if he wants a chance to to continue his career so there certainly is a lot of pressure on john next up i'm looking at vivid with a lot of pressure on him as the dallas empire look to defend their championship from last season i think that puts pressure on these guys even though they don't really have super high expectations i think they're like the they have the fifth best odds to win cod champs so no one's really expecting them to win i think they're going to do well but other people do not think so and they are trying to defend that title. And Vivid is the only player on this team who did not win that title for them last year. He really has no big chance moments. I guess he would have played in champs last year, but they probably didn't go very far, LG, um, and then he was out. So he does not really have that big time chance moments where he actually has expectations to do well. And this is the first time where he does. Another thing with Vivid is he has sort of been Dallas's X factor since he's joined the team. When he plays well, like at the stage four major, for example, him and Illy played very well. The team had great success on the backs of their performances. And if he plays poorly, like at the stage five major, he wasn't great. I mean, he wasn't terrible. Shotzi had a bad event too. But if he does not play as well, their chances wouldn't go way down because as we know, you know, these are the best of the best teams. You have to have all four guys playing well. You can't win with somebody doing absolutely terribly. 
Vivid, he has not been absolutely terrible, but he definitely can be better at times. I think Shotzi had a bad event at the Stage 5 Major, but that's not going to happen again. I think he will turn in a great performance at Champs. And Crim6, we know him. He's just one of the best winners. He is the best winner of all time in Call of Duty, so I'm sure he'll show up. Then it comes down to Vivid and Illy, but I think there's more pressure on Vivid because, like I said, he was not there for them last year, so he really does not have that experience of winning a championship ring. I don't think he's won any championships at all, so he definitely has a little bit of pressure on him. This is his first big-time experience in COD Champs, and we'll see what he can do, but certainly there's a little bit of pressure on Vivid as we approach Champs. Next up, I'm looking at Standy, and if there's one guy who I want to perform well under pressure at Champs, it is Standy because I'm very high on him, but I think it's, it is fair to say there's certainly some pressure on him as we approach champs and there are several reasons for that first of all he is the reigning stage 5 mvp or he was at least considered the best player from the best team in stage 5 they won the title so of course somebody in their team is going to get the mvp and it was him it's also his first time at cod champs as a rookie he has never performed on land at cod champs he's performed on land of course stage 4 and stage 5 majors but never for champs so that brings some added pressure too you come in as the mvp of the most previous stage your team is playing well and you are a rookie your first time at champs it's on land there's definitely pressure on him a little bit to perform and deliver a big performance in that regard. And also, just as a team, Minnesota has a lot of expectations. They said it themselves. They really were not expected to win the Stage 5 Major at all, especially when they were down 4-0 in the Grand Finals. They knew there was no pressure on them because they were expected to lose. That is not the case now. This is the first time pretty much all season long where they have expectations to deliver a top 3 performance. If you look at the betting markets, they are considered the third most likely team to win the tournament. So there are definitely expectations for them, something they really have not had all season long. And it could get to the head of Standy. Before, he was playing with no pressure you're thinking pretty much if we get top five that's good for us that's not the case anymore they really have to put together a good performance and deliver for the fans and finally there's just a lot of hype on standy right now and for good reason so one of two things can happen he can either step up to the plate and deliver a great performance and he can be called one of the best players in the world already as a rookie which he deserves or he could come out and he could flop he could have a bad performance and then we might say okay let's take a step back a step back on this kid let's let him prove himself a little bit more yet before we start crowning him a top five or a top 10 player so as an individual and as a team lots of pressure on standy and the rocker i think he'll have a great performance i don't know if they will as a team but i have no doubt standy will play well and put together a nice performance and finally, we come to RCDs, the main AR of the Atlanta phase. Couple reasons for this one. First of all, phase is going in the wrong way at the wrong time. They were one of the best teams all season long. Of course, I think they still probably have the best chance to win champs, but they are coming off that top eight double first round loss placement at the stage five major. Obviously not a good look for them as we approach champs. They really have not played the best. Even when they won the stage four major, they could have lost that one. They didn't play their best call of duty. Arstis also has been their most inconsistent player. When you see people talk about the top players in the world, Simp, Abizi are always the top two, and Selium is top three, four, five, whatever you want to call them. They're all in that top five. Arstis is not. So when he's playing well and he's sort of being the glue of this team and everybody else is performing and he's contributing, they're playing great. But if he's dragging them down some, they can't quite pick up the slack for him. That can definitely bring them down. And like I was saying earlier, it takes all four to win ch at champs. You can't get by on just three guys playing very well. Everybody has to contribute. I know Arstis can do it. He has been doing it for years now. He's been one of the best players in the world for a long time he has had great championship performances but he will need another one at the cod champs this next weekend for sure and finally why was RST brought to the phase? He was brought to the phase to win championships. Last year when they lost at champs, when they were like the best team all season long, people were saying they didn't really have that maturity factor or that leadership ability. They had the talent, but not like the glue to bring them together. That's why RST was brought here. He was brought to help bring them together, be their leader and bring them championships. And he has delivered so far. Don't get me wrong. They have won three of the five uh, stage majors so far this year. So he certainly has brought them championships, but they want the big one. Uh, champs means more than any other major to these guys of course it does so they want this one they would probably trade all three of those major championships for the ring at champs so a little bit of pressure on RCs. he was brought here for one reason to win chance with this team and be their leader and now we're going to see if he can do it and finally, two really quick honorable mentions. First, we have Skies. I think Skies has been playing very well over the course of Stage 4 and 5. He's been talking himself up a little bit, which he deserves to do because he's been playing very well, like I just said. But there is some pressure on him because he sort of has to get this team across the finish line. They start in the loser's bracket. They have been very inconsistent this year, ups and downs big times. They are the least likely team to win this event according to the odds. So there's no pressure in that sense, but there's just pressure on Skies to play well because he will pretty much not have to carry this team in terms of talent, but he will definitely have to be their best player if they want any chance of making a run at this one. And then I just had the Toronto Ultra as a whole. I don't have any individual players from this team because they play in a very team-friendly system where there's not pressure on individual players because they all contribute and they all have their well-defined roles and they can all perform it well. However, there is pressure on them as a team. They are still considered one of the top teams, if not the top team. I know Octane is picking these guys to win champs, but they are coming off of that just horrible, horrible 4-0 blown lead in the grand finals of the Stage 5 Major, and they will have to rebound from that. One of two things can happen. They can rebound, they can come back, they can put in a top two, or even win the 
this event. They surely have the talent and the teamwork to do that. Or they can still have that in the back of their head. They might not be able to get over that hunch, you know, that mental block. They might come out and choke. I don't want to see that happen, but it certainly is a possibility. So looking at Toronto, nobody in particular, but just as a team, see if they can rebound from that very bad blown lead at the Stage 5 Major. So that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed, definitely leave a like down below and leave a comment as well with your thoughts on the video and who you think is under the most pressure at Champs. And also subscribe to the channel as well if you want to see more videos like this one from me in the future. I do appreciate all of that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you have a good day today. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.